some protocols have dual tokens. Some don't. Like Ampleforth, they don't have dual tokens. Oh wait, now they do. But most of them, they have dual tokens. No, the secondary token, they have different kind of functions. So there are two primary functions. The first function is a financial instrument. So think of it as coupons, as bonds. So things you get in ESD, DSD. The second type of secondary token, it's more value accrual, value support. So for example, that would be Frex or that would be Luna. So just in case prices fall, you have the secondary token to support prices. So based on that, these are two very, very, very different functions for a secondary token. I know, Nicola, we talked about how the secondary token as a financial instrument is bad. Based on our research, don't invest in that, prices go down. But when we look at the secondary token as a way of price support, and if it can be customized, if it can be designed, if it can be manufactured or quantified in a way where it accrues value to support the value of these stable coins, that's a whole different story. So when it's a financial instrument in an algo stable coin, not the best idea. When it's used as a way of value accrual, to support prices just in case prices fall down. So a little bit like a little barrier, like a lower bound barrier to prices. That, so far in our research, it's a much better idea. So yeah, just a quick clarification for that. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. So this is what we also called a little bit like as an insurance or like a buffer, and we will touch upon also on the next research that we're going to publish. But yes, this is something I try to emphasize in a sense, like the value accrual to the tokens, but especially the role of the native token as a support, as an insurance, is extremely important on a part of design. But to circle back on the economic exploits, one suggestion, extremely straightforward, you need to balance the opportunities that you want to have for the early adopters, so for your first users, and the price stability. So we all know that, especially on the early days, you have to bootstrap. So you need extreme economic incentives to attract those investors, right? So most of the time, those users are rewarded with high inflation. And the problem is that you need to consider what will happen later on. Okay. Most of the times as well, the algo stable coin don't really have this luxury, right? Because it's a different system. You can't really do the same liquidity mining that you do for other DeFi projects. So while this is an attractive bootstrapping tool, obviously, to sell the stable coin at a sort of discount, it's really important to keep in mind the balance of attracting users or speculators. Another point that we thought it was quite crucial to highlight was the responsiveness of the system compared to the price action. That was something extremely interesting that came up in our research. So are those models dynamic enough to respond to the circumstances that happen in the protocols? We were not too sure about that. Or I would say we weren't too satisfied because maybe for the designers it's very hard to predict. These are all things that are quite hard to model. We emphasize that, you know, it's really, really important to be extremely reactive to the conditions that one stable coin can find itself down the line. So you have to try it on, on different models, fine tune all the moving parts that interact with each other and be very fluid in a sense on redemption and minting and all the different mechanism present in a system. I would say one yeah, more one more point is also the secondary token. So we keep coming back to secondary token, especially because these are algo stable coins. And there is some dynamics to the secondary token in terms of value accrual, in terms of value support, in terms of future value accrual, which is your coupon mechanism, your financial instruments. And all of them have a secondary token. And the secondary token are used in very, very different ways. Just because it's a financial instrument or just because it's a value support doesn't mean that the token will always be stable or be the safest tokens out there. It's also very important to think about how we look at the relationship between the stable token and the support token, the secondary token. What relationships are they showing? What kind of dynamic relationships are being embedded in the mathematical formula, in the smart contract, in code? Because if it's just going to be a hard code relationship, then like what we see with Titan and Iron, you have a lot of Titan being produced. People start dumping it because it's a very straightforward relationship. Prices also fall like crazy. But if you have something of a more controlled system, if you have different mechanisms, different parameters that you built into the system, like what Frex has done, where the amount of Frex share token, the secondary token, versus Frex token, the stable coin, is a bit more managed, 
it's a bit more decided by the smart contract and the minting and the production of the frac share token is more or less controlled or defined in the parameter of the token design. That's a whole different kind of story. Or let's say in Luna, you've got Luna and UST. And not only is UST's demand from the crypto space itself, UST is also used in the offline world, the off-chain world. So that kind of external dynamic support, plus the other support that the Luna token is doing to verify all these different transactions, gives a different kind of dynamics to the secondary token. So the long story of this part is for secondary token, it can help to promote stability or intensify that. And you can't define the relationship just by saying, okay, there's a secondary token, this is the function, and that's it. You have to look deeper into the details to look at what kind of relationship is there? How is the relationship formed? How is the relationship affecting each other? How does the stability of one affect the value accrual of the other? Or how does the overproduction of the other affect the stability of the other token? So these are things to think about 